Hello everybody and welcome to today's Sunday Q&A brought to you on time despite the fact this morning I was in Weymouth and that's a story. I had to go to Weymouth on a Friday afternoon with the holiday traffic then potentially had a pick up afterwards and then there was a story about me driving through London on a Saturday morning all of which is coming to a video near you soon. <coughs> because I take the whole lot. I actually filled out my card. The first time ever the phone's, the, 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 the camera's making beepy noises. Going, I'm going, why is it not recording? Your card's full. My oh my, <laughs> I thought I've done a bit. But that's not today. Today we are all about um, bonded warehouses and the wet weight in return. Um, before I go on, because we were talking about fuel last week, about can you actually put aeroplane fuel in a lorry and or a car or a van and or a motorbike or a scooter or a mobility scooter or anything else that takes fuel, a boat, a jet ski? I've gone off on one. Uh, it's been a long, it's been a long morning. It's been a long day already. Um, and we've had a couple of in from um, God said us and uh, someone else. I think it might be Paul Oldfield, who is now becoming one of the wise guys. Comments enough. Paul, welcome to the fold, my friend. Um, so, fuel alternatives. Before I get around to doing this one, has anybody thrown vegetable oil or liquid gas or nitrous oxide or anything into their vehicle other than diesel? <laughs> Because I'd actually quite like to do one on that. I think it could be sort of eye-opening, entertaining. And who knows, we might miss, you know, people out there might be able to say, save themselves a few quid. But we'll go on to that one later. Um, in the meantime, let's crack on with today. And today's uh, question of the week. I'll do question of the week because it's going to be another video. This is just me trawling for free content. And this week comes from Leachie. Thanks, mate. He says... um. Actually, no, in fairness, this is quite reasonable. Uh, you know, worth flagging, like, you know. He says, I'd done a weight in return last week. I collected an item and then had to meet the engineer on site and then swap over the item and bring back the faulty item. Got to the site, but the engineer was not there. Was told to leave the item and finish the job. They paid me for the whole lot. Felt a bit guilty about taking the money. I know what you mean. And in fairness, stay tuned to the wet weight and return to see how that one goes. But um, I want to flag that one up. I think there's a difference. I'm just going to say off the top of my head, there's a big difference between you done, you know, you're, do, you're doing a weight and return from Dunstable to Bournemouth and then back to Dunstable. When you turn around to them and you say, "Great, there's no other jobs coming out now. I've got to go back empty anyway," and where you you sort of okay, it's a weight and return, and it's a bit like, well. I can actually easily grab myself another job here and I wasn't going anywhere anyway. So I, I think that's more of a moral thing than a business thing. But let's have some thoughts on that one because we'll get a video together on that. Uh, in the meantime, last week's mistakes, which this week goes to Steve Campbell, who says... Um, Rocket fuel and sorry, jet fuel and rocket fuel is more expensive than uh, diesel fuel. It's just not taxed, which is fair enough. But that it means there's not a lot in it then, is there? Because what's the tax? On? Actually, I actually, no, you're quite right. It's not like 20% VAT. All fuel, basically the levy on, I think it's alcohol, cigarettes and petrol, is like 90% tax. The actual production cost is like, you know, you might be buying it for, say, a pound a litre. But by the time they put the tax on it, it's £10 a litre. Because, as I understand it from my Mickey Mouse days in economics, this is what re is, are referred to as inelastic goods. So you've got elastic goods and inelastic goods. Elastic goods are ones that if you start to increase the price, demand goes down. So, you know, it's sort of like these socks are a pound. I'd have 10 pairs. These socks are two pound. I'd have five pairs. These socks are a hundred pounds. I'd have no pairs. Whereas inelastic goods are ones where it doesn't really matter how much you increase the price because people need them anyway. <laughs> Your beer is now going to cost you 20 quid a pint. Don't care, I need a beer. Your fags, £20 a packet. They're £20 a packet now anyway. You need them. Your diesel, you cannot, you, you, you aren't, you're not going to go out beer, you're not going to go out without fags, and you ain't going to go out diesel. So that's kind of the argument. Although I do think with the first two, there is a certain amount of elasticity. And with the third one, there's a definite knock on effect on, okay, well, diesel's now costing me double, it's going to cost you double, which is inflationary. 
What has that got to do with career driving? I've no idea. But then nothing particularly does. But it does bring us on to, well, it doesn't really. I just brought myself onto it, to uh, this week's video, which was on bonded warehouses. Once again, thanks very much to Godzilla, who, um, before we come on to him, um, Shane Gil Martin says, he says, some swift nests in that warehouse. Now, the warehouse I recorded. These are, you know, that, that wasn't actually one I dropped onto. That sometimes I just happen to be there, and I'm literally killing time. If I'm killing time, I'll go. I've got five minutes. I'll stick a video together. He said bonded warehouses, PITA, um, price accordingly or avoid, which I think is quite good advice. Once you know it's going to be an airport, once you know if it says MK17, the thing in this game is, the longer you're in it, the more knowledge you'll have. Don't pretend it doesn't exist. So when you see a postcode of MK17, don't go, oh, I might have it off in 15 minutes. No, you won't. It's MK17. It's Waitrose, Lewis's or Amazon. Either one of them three, you're going to be in there for an hour. Oh, well, what did I do this week? Morrison's. And we had a booking time of 10 o'clock, but we had to jiggle all the jobs around. So I had a booking time of 10 o'clock. I got there at um, 20 past seven in the morning. I went in and chanced me arm. I thought, am I going to get away with this? Went, hello, love. Yeah, we're talking about a moth on the um, on the calendar. That's not relevant. Um, and I went, you know, boogie. Oh, she said, oh, no, we'll see you. That's absolutely fine. Now, I joined a queue. I was in a queue at Lorry's. I joined the queue at the back of Lorry's. She said, no, we'll see you. She said, we have one in here already. He was doing at three o'clock. We've done him already. I went, okay, fine. I got out of there at 10. I was there for... So, oh, yeah, quarter, hang on. Offset, quarter, seven, eight. Yeah, nearly three hours. You can't get them for waiting time because my booking time was 10. And we needed to get the job anyway off to do our own jobs. Um, but like Andy, who's one of our drivers, he said, shops are awful. He said, shops, you know, so Waitrose, if you're delivering a distribution centre, if it's Asda's, if it's Waitrose. So, A, and this is something I'd actually, I'd like some feedback from you guys on too. A, um, if you know from the postcode, it says MK17, ring them up. You know, ST14, ring them up, go, is it JCB? That's the youth now, isn't it? Is it JCB? Yeah. I don't want it, or I'll do it, but it's going to cost you another 100 quid. Or when the job pings through, now what do we think on this one, guys? Are you within your rights to ring a shipper back and say, I'm ever so sorry, you sent me a job through, I didn't realise it was Lidl's, I'm not interested. Because for the money that I've just quoted you, I know I'm going to be there all day. So that's a question to the wise guys. What do we do on that one? Or do they turn around then and say, well, you've accepted the job? Or the other thing to do is to ring them up and go, right, you've got a job on. Is it Lidl's? And they'll go, yes. And I'll say, okay, well, I'll do it. It's going to cost you this much. But what happens when they send the job through automatically? Because not everyone rings up and say, okay, the job's yours. You can't even ask a question. It just appears. You don't even accept it. It's just it's there. You bid on it, I've sent it. So let's have some feedback on that one because I think that's important. That's for, certainly for career exchange video. I think that's something that I haven't done that really needs to get out there. But um, where was we? Yeah, coming back to it. Godzilla's uh, did one on Bonnie Warehouses. And he says, excellent bit of information uh, to have out there, even if I do say so myself. Well, you did, my friend. But thank you very much for putting me in the picture. I just hope I got all the facts right because I'm not sure I did. He said, when I was bidding on bonded items out of Birmingham Airport, this was when he was running on the exchange himself, like, um, it's cargo, so next to the Holiday Inn near the A45, if anyone needs to collect. I've done that. I had to drop off some furniture right next door to it. I thought it was the airport, but it wasn't. It was kind of, you could see the planes there. It was like, it was at the Holiday Inn. Um, he says, um, I was clueless and throwing it out there as 50 quid, um, be done in half an hour. You know, so you think 50 quid, half an hour, job done. The five hour and 10 plus phone calls and then popping a text uh, to the office to explain to the guys every 20 minutes to say that this job needs baking, um, waiting time and needs to be booked as such. So what he's saying is, is oh, well, I'll do that one for 50 quid. I'll be in and out. And five hours later, he was still waiting to collect. So something to be wary of with bonded warehouses, which comes back to what I was saying earlier. If you get a job through on the CX... And it's, you've got to bear in mind you're bidding blind. It just says, like, you know, Derby to Luton, um, Norton Keynes to Scunthorpe. And it comes through and you look at it and you go, oh, no. Can you ring them up and go, no. No, I'm sorry, but no, I'm not doing it. We did have one guy in the firm when I had the company back in the day who wouldn't do alcohol. It wasn't a religious thing. Um, it, 
he just he said no he said I don't approve of it I don't know it might be a family thing so I don't approve of it I don't do drugs I don't move cigarettes I don't move alcohol I don't move drugs and if a job came through and it was picking up from like um, he said like picking up five pallets of like wine he just ring him up so I'm not doing it and most of the time they would go okay fair enough okay we'll put it where we post so let's have some thoughts on that if nothing else extra content for Pete and also hopefully getting out some decent information out there, which is actually what I'm trying to focus on a little bit more. You know, I think back in the day, I was sort of, you know, the idea of thinking, well, the channel might grow into something great. I'm kind of past that now. I'm kind of thinking if we could just get the information out there, that'd be cool. I mean, kind of, it was always in my mind anyway, but it's, it's now more so. The wife said to me today, I mean, I, was, I think I might be rambling, so I think I might be a bit um, rabbit in the headlights here since finishing at 8 o'clock last night and starting again at 5 this morning and then doing an hourly shop. Uh, but, you know, I'm home now. And um, she said, well, why do you keep doing it? And I went, well, you know, we did get some stuff out of it. You know, I did get the circuit out of it and I do get the Google ads, which really is not really worth its money, right, you know. But on the flip side of things... The best thing is always when someone comes up and said, changed my life. So let's just focus on that. Let's see if we can get some inf- some proper decent information out there to people. Let's just crack on. I'm going to I'll get off my soapbox now. Um, yes, now, company ID. Now, we're talking about bonded warehouses again. Uh, Paul King says, company ID also needs an expiration date. I did fire this one up in the video. Um, I did, however, say that... Um, Company ID is a bit Mickey Mouse in the fact that all they really want is company ID is to show them a laminated card, which anybody can. It's it's not like it needs to be certified by the government or ratified in some way. It's not like a driving license or a passport or an an official document. It's just a laminated piece of paper that says I work for Bob's Couriers, like, you know. Um, What I recommend is put an expiration date of two years on. Because one year will come around too quickly, and if you put on more than two years, they'll go, well, this is ludicrous. This is your company ID that says you're going to be here till, like, eternity. So, yeah, I recommend a two-year, but do put an expiration date on. Otherwise, they'll look at it and go, no expiration date, we won't take you. But why is company ID? But company ID, well done to its own, you know? So, um, this is an interesting one as well from London Creative. That's my mate, Nick. Hello, mate. Um, he said, just to say, because you mentioned this before, you don't need a big desktop printer to have a printer in your truck. You could get an A4 thermal printer that will connect to your phone um, and it, it has like a fax machine. Basically, it's um, 8 centimetres by 24 centimetres wide and will print your paperwork with no ink. Now, I know we've got thermal printers because we've got thermal printers in the taco heads. So that when the actual, we have to do a print out because you've done an infringement and it spits the paper out, that doesn't need ink because it just burns the ink. It's something to do with thermal, which I presume is like, that's what that does. My only question with that one, has anyone used a thermal printer to print out like um, air, airport paperwork? Because in my mind, it kind of needs to be like A4 and it kind of needs to look like the real thing. And if you turn up with tiny, I mean, don't get me wrong, maybe you can get thermal printers that are that wall up in size. But yeah, what do we think? Thermal printers, do they work? Have they got batteries? Do they need batteries? Is the paper expensive? Let's get some feedback on that one. That could be something else we could throw back out there. And someone might think, actually, I live near Heathrow, and I can get a thermal printer for 50 quid, and I'm going to get double the amount of jobs. And then he's a happy man. So that's what we're all about. Cool. Um, Paul Oldfield also says, thanks for clearing all that up. What is the next head scratcher? Uh, next head scratcher, Paul, what are we on to? Um... A guy asked me a question about um, if you run out of driving hours or if you're close to your driving hours, do you have, do you have to sometimes sleep out in your truck, even if you need to base? So we've got to address that one. And then anyone, anything that anybody else wants to throw out there, let's get the questions out there. Let's get them answered. In the meantime, <laughs> the wet wait and return, which was one I typed a little while ago. Because I haven't been doing so many life on the road videos, I didn't think anyone was that interested. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back to it at some stage. Who knows? Uh, but uh, yeah. So Godzilla says, "Oh, he said now to go back. Definitely bring the customer and ask them the name of whoever what is it to go back. A hundred percent of the time, you get a, uh, you get the call oh, on the ramp of the motorway. Yeah. No, so what he's saying is, if there's nothing to go back." Um, 
double check it before you leave. <laughs> Because otherwise, you know, sort of, it's a bit like, and I've had it before, where I'm heading back, and I've just got on the motorway, I go, oh, no, hang on. No, that collection's on again. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll just do the five miles down to the next junction, go around the roundabout, do the five miles, make the next junction. I was there. You could have told me sooner. But, um, yeah, nail it down. And, um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of it on the wet weight return for today. Might get some more on that one. And then finally, this week we're on to the miscellaneous. And on this week's miscellaneous, uh, Barry Caldwell says, he says, um, right, now Barry Caldwell, thinking about joining the Courier Exchange, looking at these comments has answered my questions about joining the CX. I can get a van, no problem, but only if it's worth it. Looking at these comments, it isn't. Barry, mate, you do you. As I've turned around all the way along, I am not here to sell the Courier Exchange. I never have been. It's uh, The fact that I think I've inadvertently done it, in fact, I'm definite I've inadvertently done it, is academic. All I've ever done is made videos about how my life changed, how I ended up on the career exchange, how it's working for me, and what I find out of it. And, you, and, and in my life, I've said this one before as well, you'll find three different people, European, European three, English three, three different people. Those that will tell you that they're making a million pound when they're not making a penny. Those that will tell you when they're not making anything when they're making a million pound. And those sorts of, that's, that's two. Those that will tell you the truth. Um, I just tell you the truth. You do you. Join, don't join. I think if you've got your own customers, then it's very sensible to have the Curie Exchange because otherwise you're, you're stuffed for backloads. If you haven't, and you're looking for it just to make, make money on its own, it depends on you. I found some people some people have done very very well out of it some people not at all that's it I have nothing more to say on the subject whatever you decide to do other than whatever you decide to do courier exchange bricklaying coopering building barrels there's not many coopers left in the world uh, I hope it makes you happy <laughs> and, I, and I hope you have a decent life uh, Travel USN says um Oh, this on vans, most reliable van. He said, I've not had a single problem with my XLWB 3-litre uh, Fiat Ducato. Absolute bomb-proof engine. On the other hand, my 2017 long wheelbase Sprinter had sensor after sensor go wrong. I think this could just be luck of the draw with vehicles, mate. I was always fine with, with absolutely fine with um, Sprinters. My mate Ken's just bought a Citroen. He's had loads of trouble. He was happy with VWs. It just seems to be luck of the draw. Um... In fairness, we come on to that with Lawrence afterwards. He said, um, only 75k on the clock with a full service history. Now I'm getting a ch This is on the Merc. Now I'm getting chain rattle. Now that's unlucky. Because he's got a chain rather than a belt. Uh, and the Merc couldn't couldn't get knock sensors over six months plus leaving me high and dry. So he, he's not having a lot of joy with his Merc. Um, these are only supplying service vehicles. So they're basically saying we're only supplying our own vehicles, not yours. Um, all Mercedes around the UK was the same. Um, aftermarket sensors can't be coded to the van. Merck themselves have tried for me. So what they're saying is they can't get the part. They've even tried to fit aftermarket parts to his van. They still won't work. Um, so after your 10 starts or 500 mile countdown, you're stuffed. And only Merck's star machine can reset it. Then get the van going again for the next 500 miles or 10 starts. And he said, Ad blue sucks. It's also true. Uh, don't get me started on the uh, blue thing. We've done videos. We've done, I'll do you a link. We've done videos on the fact that that is, um, is that the link? Or link? I think it's link. Um, on, it's just basically, basically poor people's tax under the name of ecology. Don't even get me started on that. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry the Merck hasn't worked out for you. I was always fine with Merck's, but I think so. It's just that thing, isn't it? It just seems to be the thing. If somebody's got moving parts, some of them seem to move really nicely in sync, and some of them really seem to mesh. And which one you get, you just don't know. Most of the newer ones seem to be better, but I don't know. He also says, he says, P.S. You only have to, oh, this is quite interesting, this. He says, you only have to look at the most expensive, prestigious motorhome brands like Hyma or Franklin. They mostly use Fiat. I guarantee you, my friend, that next week I will have a comment from a guy who says, Fiat? You will not believe the nightmare I have in my fear. The thing blew up my house, it stole all of my money, it ran off my wife, and then it dumped itself in my swimming pool. Probably won't get that one, but we might get something like it. Um, and the final word this week. I'm tired. I'm not that tired. I'm fine. I'm cut the grass after this. I'm going to watch Rick and Morty. Uh, the final word this week. 
and goes to David Batchelor, who said, well, I never thought I'd say it, Pete, but I'm a deaf convert. I've been driving around in Scania's for a long time now, amongst other trucks. I can honestly say the new R640 is a crock of junk, which I imagine is the new Scania. Um, to the point the company got rid of them, all 110. <sighs> Scania's might be losing their way, won't they, really? You know, Scania's, don't they? Don't, 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 Scania's the same mob at that sub. I'm thinking they make jet fighters. Begins with Ness. It's from somewhere foreign. Um, what about else begins with Ness? It's from somewhere foreign. It's Volvo. No, it doesn't work. Um, and they've been replaced by brand new DAF 480 XFs. You've got to love an XF. And he's got an XF. He's a workhorse. Um, what a superb trucking always. Streets head of Scania's. Just thought I'd share it for now. That's one for Ian. My mate Ian drives XFs. Ian, if you're up there, I've got to come and see you sometime. I've got to have a chat with Mark. Um, but you're not listening, and I'm just talking to myself, and I really. So that's today's Q and A. As usual, I'm pleased I actually managed to get it done because I'm planning to do the garden tomorrow and do all the. I've done the shopping, do all the other stuff. And do you know what I'd like to do tomorrow? I'll go to the pub. I've been a pub with the family for as long as I can remember. I think I'm going to go have Sunday lunch, and then Monday back to it, back to taking care and taking money.